Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jake. Spock! <laughs> we saw Spock. <laughs> we did see Spock. We had to Spock. To, uh, to Finally! Get to... So we are Alpha Quadrant 6, and we are doing our after sh our review show for Star Trek Discovery. This We just saw the episode Season 2, Episode 7, Light and Shadows. And it was, I think, maybe the best episode so far this season, because, you know, stuff's happening. Yeah. It was a, the, the pace was good. I liked the action. Uh, and, as we said, we finally get to see Spock, so no more, no more yeah. head fakes or teases this, this week. I felt like this week it was win, lose, or draw. Like, they, yeah. they, they had to show Spock this week. Um, it was exciting to see him. You know, the actor, you know, no, nobody looks exactly like Leonard Nimoy, of course. You can't, you can't gotta put yeah. that out of your head. Yeah, it's, to me, know. I'm like, oh, this is young Spock, you know, I'm just telling myself. But the actor looked cool, he's intense. Yeah. Yep. Um, I felt like he had a like a very strong presence. He looks Vulcan, which is good, mm -hmm. right? It's so always a plus for Vulcans. Right, yeah. exactly. What'd you think Vulcan. of his beard? Are those two little pointy things here? Is it kind of weird? Well, that might have been deliberate to give him like a, a weirder look, you know? Yeah, I thought it was fine. Just trim that stuff down, man. Make it smooth. I'm just saying. <laughs> so I thought, you tell him to manscape his face a little bit? <laughs> so I, I felt like this episode had a very good balance of action, mm -hmm. of drama, and of the, the talking serious stuff that I've complained about in the past. Like, you know, right. there, there wasn't any crying, which is There's fantastic. There's no crying this episode. Um, so I, overall, I, I feel like the plot is starting. Here we are, halfway through the season, and the, the it's the, coming together. It's starting yeah. to percolate. Like we're starting to get like the buildup of what was built up behind in the earlier episodes starting to happen. I loved the interaction between uh, Pike and uh, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah both good characters. I've always thought Tyler is a decent character. But uh, they're you know they're both kind of butting heads a little right. bit, which is weird. You know, because you think like Tyler, it's weird. Like all, yeah, but you know, he's section thirty one now. Right? Yeah, that's it. Though. He's sort so of. He was, He's throwing his badge around there. It's like, yeah, yeah, you gotta do what I tell you. And Pike's like, yeah, not so fast. You the can't C, beat the, the chair. C, the yeah. chair overrules you. <laughs> yeah, I like that. The chair beats the badge. Again, uh, uh, with Pike being a great captain, he keeps his cool. Mm -hmm. He immediately is going to do, you know, very, very much competency important with him. He yeah, but there's still the Star Trek thing of, there, someone's got to go on a shuttle on a very dangerous mission, so the captain goes. <laughs> who cares if he's the most qualified? You can't send the captain away on the most dangerous right. mission. And let's talk about that. Here's a temporal anomaly yeah. that sh shows up. Let's get a shuttle and get really close so we can launch a probe into it. But this is, Why not just launch a damn probe from the I know, ship? but this is they TV, guys. For some it's TV. They, they didn't, but that's it. They didn't give us a real good reason. Give us a reason, then I'll go along with it. But, yeah, but they just on. put the two very valuable people. Yeah. It's always the valuable people. We were watching a... Uh, a Star Trek, the original series cartoon before the show, yeah, right? Blast from the past. And like every, oh it was it was McCoy, oh, yeah. Spock, Captain Kirk, and Bones. Oh yeah. No, yeah. and uh, Scotty. Yeah. Arguably, some of the most important people on the Enterprise. They're the away team. They're right? the away team. I mean, but, <laughs> but Picard never would have done that. It, it occurred to me <laughs> when we were watching the cartoon because I hadn't seen one in a very long time. But it occurred to me. But those are the people that you kind of need to send because they can problem solve better than anybody right. else. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's a good point. Right? So, uh, you know, Captain wanted to do it because it was this ridiculously difficult Yeah, but wouldn't thing. you think, though, you would have people whose job it is to do the dangerous away teams? Probably. Right? You're saying? Yeah, you're sure. Saying, sure. And that's not the exact same skill set as being the freaking captain, right? Yeah. Being the captain, that's the, the skill set should be keeping you in the chair, not in a shuttle doing something technical that you should have... Someone who's, that's who's their job. But, right? but don't forget that this is a TV show and, and we need to see the characters. You know, it's not like they're going to bring in this guy that you don't know. Why not? Know. I think they should develop that character who's the guy that gets sent into the most dangerous missions all the time because that's his job. That would be a great character. Well, I don't know because like, let's And we know, like, and maybe every season, like the guy gets killed and he's replaced by somebody else yeah, every okay. season. So he's, like a red, he's a red shirt. Looks like we need a new Timmy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess if you compare it to, to modern day special ops, those special ops guys that they send in are yeah, certainly not, not the, generals. the generals, right? Yeah. That, that does, how about this? That does make sense. How about sending a freaking robot? I was thinking about Star Trek today, and I'm like, you know, where the hell are the robots? <laughs> sure, you got androids. You got Ariam, who's awesome on, on Discovery, mm -hmm. she, but she's a cyborg. Where's the robots? Think about it. They're just Why not just throw one, CG one in the background, because it's a robot and we're in the 23rd right. century. <laughs> Bob, Come on. Arguably... It we, doesn't fit the vibe. I don't care. Trek. It's a free, it's a future. Bob, we need robots. We're obsessed with robots. We have to accept that Star Trek hasn't fully embraced robots, right? It's, it's just one of the things. But listen, they guys, even, guys. Like in the original this, series, they they like AI was an anomaly. You know, it's yeah. Like, 
That computer's acting like it's thinking. Yeah, two hundred million. I must, I must <laughs> talk it into destroying itself. <laughs> but guys, come on, this was this was a great episode. I, I yeah, didn't. I agree. It was fine. No, not once, other than like, hey, it's not cool that the captain's going on such a dangerous mission. I thought that too. <laughs> so you but, weren't pulled but out. You weren't the pulled entire out. episode. I was not pulled no, out. You're into it. Yeah. I thought every character had great motivation. I loved, you know, Spock's parents handled that situation really cool. That was a cool thing that was going on. It was there. so Vulcan. That was that was. Yeah, cool. mm. it was done very well. Like I, I love both of the people that are playing the parents. They're 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 yeah. perfect in the roles. I thought that Michael was was acting in a you know very deliberate, well thought out way. I loved the interaction between Michael and Georgia. Oh yeah, Georgia's oh, every scene with her is awesome. She's, she's yeah. just she lights, needs, up, lights up the screen. They should give her her own series. <laughs> Wait, they are doing that. But it's how cool is it that she? You do you see the in in that person the actor right yeah. in her eyes. She's such a good actor that you could see that she's got wheels turning. Like yes. Every time she's touching someone, she's like, and it's the perfect manipulation. I'm going to give you something that you need, that you is that legitimately you want and need, but it's going to serve my ends yeah. deliciously. And she and she and you she know acts it. it. She acts it like you right. can just tell, like, hey, you got to get Spock off of here. And you're like, whoa, don't wait a second. I know it's Spock, but she's got something under her sleeve, up her sleeve, man. Be careful. Then she goes to the captain and she dumps her. Her blackmail on the captain. Oh my god! It was brilliant. It was like, wow, she is she, outclassing not the, not the emperor for nothing, right? No, I mean, she oh she's outclassing everybody, and she should. I mean, it, it would be it would not make sense if she didn't. If she literally comes from an entire universe where that that's the skill set, and she was the best. But that's, yeah, it's the best. some nasty selective pressure in yeah. that mirror universe, yeah. man. And she's the apex <laughs> no, but predator. This is, this is the the art of writing great stories. We yeah. have a fantastic. Backstory with Giorgio. Like, she's dangerous. We don't know what she wants. We don't know what she's up to. Mm -hmm. We just know that she's doing things out of self interest, right? We know it. Even if she's yeah. ever, even if she softens at some point, she's going to have all these things spun sure. up that she's doing. And for her to go to Michael at a very serious moment when they're going to mind screw Spock, or so she says, right? Because we're not sure, but it seemed like it. And she suspected mm. it. You know, Michael was being careful because yeah. she didn't want them to do something bad to Spock. Um, <coughs> You know, she just is manipulating them like putty in her hands. Uh, we wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as impressive if we didn't see multiple episodes of her. If as we didn't know her whole backstory. Exactly. Right, yeah. right. So it's, right. you know, season one is paying off right now, big time in this episode. I really appreciated that. And plus, you know, they bring Spock on, and, and it was very smart of them to bring Spock on compromised. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I agree with that because I'll, this is Spock, and we, the first time we see him, he's kind of gibbering and he's out of his mind and emotional. Like, okay, I don't really want to see Spock that way. I want to see Spock. So I'm, all I'm saying is that, okay, this is fine, but he better be have his wits. They better soon, not drag that out. I want to long. see Spock. I don't want to see this. I agree. I was going to be only sort of met Spock oh, this barely. episode because he wasn't himself. But I also understand from the, the showrunners that this is Spock 10 years before the original series. Yeah. And he hasn't fully got his, you know, he's not fully balance correct. yet. And he's, so he's more, this is a more emotional less put together version of Spock. That's that's <laughs> that's deliberate. Yeah, Bob, come on. It's, it's Spock, Spock ten years ago. No, it's not. It's Spock ten years ago. It's so what? He was still a logical Vulcan. You, he wasn't. you can't go by the menagerie where he touches those flowers and he smiles. Because, uh, he because they pilot. didn't they didn't know they didn't have Spock dial in. No, in Spock would dial his head. That's canon. But Spock, the women. <laughs> Spock was, yeah, yeah, yelling weird stuff. I know it's canon, but it's so weird. But the thing is, I kind of <laughs> took this whole thing, see if this makes you feel better. Yeah. I hope I'm right. I kind of took it like Spock went into a deep you know, meditation to figure out this puzzle that's going on. Yeah. Like Spock delivered that information to Michael. Right? It even did it backwards for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know what, what's going on with him. But I just thought... Okay, I have to say, that's yeah. just a dumb myth about um, dyslexia. No, he says he has Vulcan dyslexia or whatever. That or he's he hit he has, oh, okay. he's got it from reading the human side, yeah. yeah. So it's a you know dyslexia is, is a reading disorder. It's a verbal disorder, but it has nothing to do with reversing letters or reversing images or anything. That's just a myth, and I hate it when popular culture like right. TV shows okay, that makes sense. perpetuates oh, okay. myths. So that was one disappointment. I have to ding them on that. that well, is, you're a doctor, so but, but whatever. They should look that crap up. That's why you have that's why you have technical advisors. So you don't just perpetuate a stupid myth as part of your science fiction. Okay, but is there no reading disability where you do reverse? No. Do you do exist. It? No. I always thought I, I thought that letters would be, would be no. flipped 
No. That's what I heard. Doesn't, you know? I know. That's it's a myth. It, okay. That's not true. It's not true. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay, Steve. I know that, but that's an opportunity. Whatever yeah, you're right, That's an opportunity right. that they missed. Come up with something new. You don't have to... Yeah, they, they could have just I, said... They're, but the point is, though, yeah. I, I don't think that Spock... I think Spock was in some type of deeply meditative thing yeah. to figure it out. And I think Spock figured out that they have to bring him to the Talosians. That's to cool. unravel big reveal, what's going big on. reveal at the end of the episode. They're going to go to go into Talos Four, War and that's a callback to the the, the two, menagerie, two yeah. episodes, the Cage, which was the pilot episode for Star Trek, right. the original series, then the Menagerie, which which I believe aired in season one yep. right, of now, Star Trek. Now yeah. and Pike, now in Pike's timeline, he had already been to Talos and experienced that whole Menagerie yep. thing, um, the, the Cage, like two years before current current yeah. time now. So yeah. this is in his past, and this is f kind of fresh with him, and it's. But uh, they, the preview showed the the the, the, the Talosians. And, yeah, they uh, look cool, man. They, they look cool, but I don't know. I think they diverged maybe a little bit too much from. I like that for the original Cage. They had they used women that they made into the big-headed aliens with yeah. the They were androgynous. Veins. They yeah. were they were totally androgynous. They should be. They, they right. should be androgynous. And they're not androgynous. And the little sneak peek we got tonight yeah. is like, ah, oh, they're very guyish. But wh whatever. Right. I, but I wish they kind of stayed a little bit closer because I love those those original Yeah, me too. Talosians. I love, I love they were those. Awesome. But I, they did a good job of making us anxious for next week's episode. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. mean, the little sneak that we saw of oh next week. Oh, my God. I, it would have been good enough to know that what planet they're going to. Yeah, that for. was it. They had me at Telos yeah, 4. Me too. Yeah, right. absolutely. And we also learned, not from watching this episode, but it's out there now on the internets, that uh, Star Trek Discovery has been picked up for season three. Oh, yes. I didn't hear that. Awesome. Yes. All right. It's happening. It's happening. It's it's happening. Yeah, no, that's good. The more, the more Star Trek, the better. I'm really hoping that the trend is, is keeping now. Like, if I average out all the episodes for season two, generally, I, I like them, mm -hmm. and I think they're much better than and season one. And they're building. One. Yeah, yeah, they're building. Yeah. I, I, this episode in particular, like, the stakes were, were high. You know, they weren't saving the universe. That's great, because I'm yeah. tired of that. They're on yeah. their missions. Well, they kind you of don't are know. saving the universe, ultimately. Well, this red we don't know if that's the big mission with the Red Angel. Yeah, we don't know right, yet. Okay. But I mean, still, in this, but not this episode, in this episode right. you know, there, was two, there was two plot lines going yeah. on. They were both not really interacting with each other, but affect each other. Yeah. And I just felt that the intensity was there that it needs to be. The, the, char the character writing was great. The dialogue was great. Yeah. It, they bounced around a lot. Like, I got to see a lot of the bridge crew and people doing things on the bridge, which is always oh, fun. Oh, yeah, and we know that the, the robot that you like, Bob, is compromised. Just going to say, yeah. Ariam, finally, some really good close-ups of, yeah. of her makeup, which is wonderful. And, yeah, so she's going to have, you know, she's going to be more, she's gonna be more than just, yeah, a couple of words here she's and got there. A, she's got a b bad wiring or something now. Well, she's, she's she was compromised she's, by the probe. Yeah, she's in, she's infected. Yeah, yeah. She's and got what a nasty was the probe? Virus. That probe looked just like the hunter seekers from uh, the Matrix. Matrix. Yeah, no, they were they weren't well, hunter similar. Seekers. Similar. They, yeah, yeah, with the with the, uh, yeah, the octopus, octopus arms. Tendrils. They were that was really cool. So this probe was like set into the temporal anomaly, and it went 500 years in the future. And somebody upgraded it. Yeah, and it sent it, it back, back to kill us. Yeah. To and uh, that thing, I, w I was hoping they saved some of that tech because come, come on. Did you see years. that little fingers were coming out of the? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was scary. That that's not cool. That was a bad bad mojo yeah. going on there, boy. Um, I liked how they they uh, foreshadow Pike shooting Tyler. Yeah. And you're like, what's he gonna do? Tyler Tyler's got something up his yep. sleeve, right? Yep. Totally bought the whole thing. And then when they revealed it, that's that's smart he was writing. Shoot, yeah, he was shooting the, the appendage. Yeah. Not that's where when you see a, when you see a, a peek into the future, you can't trust what you see. That's right. That's what I take that's, away from that's that. That's a good rule. And then Stamets, <laughs> Stamets is like freakishly powerful. Like we, there's things about him, like you know. Yeah, man, he could yeah. see through. You know, he could see four anomalies. dimensionally, and yeah. Yeah, you got to. We got to update our. our and he had the best man. line of the episode: "Trust the math." Yeah, <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and it was also good character development between him and Tilly. Like they've had great character development. Yeah. They really mm -hmm. care about each other. Like they love each other. You know, they're they're yeah. and they have a lot of respect for each other. And he was telling Tilly like, it, 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 "You're the one that I chose to operate the machine." Yeah. Like you know, yeah, don't beam me into space. Yeah. So overall, I, I give this you know this episode was great. I mean, if the rest of the season can keep up that, if it uh, keeps this up, it'll yeah, be I think good it's going to get fantastic. better. I think yeah. it's going to even better because now it's, stuff's going to really be coming to a head. And next week. Talos four, my God! Yeah, what I mean, can't wait. That's a good choice. Well, that's going to be nuts. Wait. I mean, you know, if you know, the, if you've seen those two Star Trek: The Original Series episodes, or the pilot, and, and, and we just and, watched them recently by coincidence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's a it's a weird situation they're walking into. I mean. You know, they, they, Pike is not on the planet right now, no. right? That, that happens to Pike at the end of his life. 
where, where the, the yeah. Telosians like will give right. him a, a, good, a good experience for the rest of his life, even though he was like burned from head to toe. But the point is, like, they're going to have to go back down and say, "Hey, we need your help." Remember, remember me two years, years ago? Remember us? Yeah, remember that I'm weird back. stuff we that you, happened. We need your mind mojo to read this Vulcan's uh, head. Yeah, uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what happens. And it's also a death sentence to walk on that planet. Remember? If he, anyone yeah. finds out, if anyone finds out, like that's like not jail. Like they kill you. Yeah. Well, you know, Michael, though, I mean, how many laws does she have to break, right? It's yeah. Like her, yeah, that's I mean, her thing, yeah. though, right? The prime directive, the prime shimmer active, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and also, though, like, don't forget, Pike is on an incredibly important mission, mm. right? He's got leeway, and Section 31 is in play. Like, you know, they've got to bend the rules. Oh, absolutely. This is like the, good stuff the done, fate yeah. of, or, like, life in the universe, you know, yeah. is really at stake, apparently. We'll see. Okay, well, we will be here next week watching episode eight, and uh, we'll be here for the after show. I hope you join us. Yeah, now you can go to alphaquadrant6.com. That's alphaquadrant, the number six.com, to go to our website, which will link you to everything else that we do. But you know we're on Facebook, and you know we're on Patreon. You can go to those two places if you like as well. But please check out the website and contact us and tell us other things that you'd like us to do, like... Hey, I want to see Alita Battle Angel. Can you give us a review on that? Which we should have done last week. We'll do that. Yeah, but we, we're gonna, we will very happily Absolutely. go see every science fiction movie that comes out and do a fast review. But give us your suggestions. And we got to see Spock today. We did. Yeah, there it is. See you next time.